Okay, part two of this wave motion demonstration. Um, this was the strip we used the first time, uh, in the first part. And uh, now I have an old rib here from an upright. And I uh, passed it through the time saver to make it the same thickness. We have thin down here, that they do, you know, on the, the pianos and over here. And I tried to uh, measure closely and Make sure it's the same length, the same distance from where it tears out here to here. So we have a taper here. So I'm going to clamp this down and bend the soundboard one way on oh, the soundboard. Bend our piece of wood one way or the other. See, pops up over here. And uh, moves the crest. So hopefully this will work. It'll give me a hard time. This is the first time now. So here we vibrate with this. It gets pretty quiet right there. Over here, as soon as we pull away. Busy. Busier. Very busy. And about here, all the way over to here nothing. Keep pulling it away from the, the edge. You might think it would vibrate a little bit there. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, right there it starts. Very busy. Really vibrating like crazy. Right in the middle. It's really bizarre. It really surprised me. I... Quiet there. Dead in the same spot over here. That's lively. Seems like it vibrates like crazy right here. Okay, so let's clamp this end in. It's a little tapered block that's tapered to our curvature and our soundboard is about. It doesn't push it flat. So over here we're gonna assimilate one side that's pushed down like this. And this side got you held down. What would that do? Oh. I made this part lively, right up close. It was over here before. That's weird. Kept the same crown, but just shortened it a little bit. So, and of course, in the other video, we, we you know what happens when we move this over here. You get maximum amplitude, amplitude, undulation. Okay, so this side is clamped in with the curve of the soundboard, the natural belly, um, before it shrinks. And over here, we're going to we're going to put this the same distance here, about there. Okay? And we're going to put this here. And we're going to put this here. Quick. Oh, vibrating right off here. And uh, see what that does. And yeah. Now it's coming off at 90 degrees here. 
straight, straight. Oh, it starts to rise up here. It goes nice slope up, 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 up. Keeps going past where we've had this all along. And now the crest of the board is over here. And it comes down right into the right into the rim. See what happens with this. Nothing. A little bit of some right where the right where the taper gets thick. Nothing here, over here. That was the quiet spot. Jump over. It's continuous. It's not the quiet spot anymore. Brought it to life. Pretty dead. Very lively. Oh, it gets gradually louder and louder. See, it's, it's not pretty abrupt right there, it stops there, but again, starts where the scallop is about it. No weak spot, bouncing like crazy, right under where the bridge was, where, the, where, where, the, where our exciter is. Gonna get quiet over here. That's amazing. See what happens when we put something like this on here. Try, uh, try it right here where our bridge is. This is in a dead spot. Doesn't do much. Well, let's move it. Oh, it really vibrates like crazy here. Look at that.
pump. Bounces like crazy right there now. Bounces like, like mad, you can feel it. Without moving this, and over here, it's very rapid, probably the speed of the fan displacement, but the undulations are choked here. Makes you wonder. Seems like an airplane, let's, do, let's try it again. Put this here. And I would assume that it works the other way, the same way. It's just the opposite. Um, meaning if I put this curvature block on the other end, it would do the same way. I would assume. All right, one more time. We'll put this here. This is like the same, about the same distance here. And that's a little further. Put this back a little bit. In fact, we should move it back and forth and see what happens. It shortens the distance between this and this. So, but it also pushes down. Pushes down on it, and the crest of the soundboard is here now. Try this. All right, let's see what happens. All right, we clamped it up, and we'll see. Pretty big. No dead spot. Bouncing like crazy. Until about here. And then it diminishes. Whoa. Oh, to nothing. And that's far away. Past where this starts. So, just goes to show what beveling the rim on a soundboard does to your to your sweet spot, to your optimum position. Um, of course, it depends on how far away this scallop is from the rim and how thick this is. When you push it down flat, of course, the thicker it is, it's gonna push it down with more vigor, more positive, uh, but it, it isn't necessary to have it really any thicker than what you need because you want the sound, or you want your crown to be, to be round. You don't want it to push it completely flat, so you have to adjust the stiffness of these ends here especially when you clamp them flat. On this end, well, not so much, but it does allow for flexibility, you know, like this. Of course, the shorter it is, is, the stiffer it is. Okay. We should take a look at that 33B behind me, that checker ring in back there. This one has the bevel from here to the corner. And the other side, all the way up to here, where the damper's in, is beveled. So, when they have a cutoff bar, by 1867, they, that's what that is, a 67. And uh, they did that. That's how they shift them. Those nodes on that weird configuration, how the bridge is, this, you know, certain distance from the rim as it goes up and they can actually con have some uh, some control over this. Otherwise, uh, we'd still have flat, strange sound loads. Huh. Okay, that does it for now. We're going to have another part to this. Part three. I'm going to discuss some of these. This is a really weird one. Anyways, um, I'm going to discuss the effect of the crown has pushing out, outwards, and what the, the height of the curvature, what effect does the 
distance between here you know, how the squeezing of the rib and the expansion of the soundboard on here how it affects this you know see this is not an accurate uh, portrayal or whatever experiment um, what we're going to do what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this here yeah, boy, this is really weird. This is uh, spruce, and I'm going to glue it to this rib here. And I'm going to uh, assimilate a moisture expanded soundboard, the effect it has on the rib. Because when you take this piece of wood here, and you squeeze it on the end, and it does that, that is not what happens in a piano soundboard. This stiffens it a great deal. Which is not true to what goes on. Now how they achieve the curve in a soundboard in this piece of wood is the, ex is the moisture expansion of these the grain here. This is you know, I'm going to try to duplicate what happens in a soundboard um, a moisture expanded soundboard. It actually causes it to curve up like this. Here's one here. This one was done twenty seventeen, November. And uh, we pressed a single rib on it. And uh, just leave it hanging around. We got several uh, samples like this hanging around to see what they do from summer, winter, summer, winter. It gets rounder in the summer and it gets flatter in the winter. But it's always the same. So we're going to glue this on here in the next video. We're going to uh, see how it changes this. When this expands on here, stretches out one side. And the compressive side has to resist the squeezing of the stretching out. It has to. Anyways, we'll see how that affects our undulations and the wave motion. We'll do the same experiment with this on. And we won't have to force, force it on the end. The rib will hold the crown. So it's just going to set in there without any force squeezing it in. So we'll run that experiment. And next.